Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is another episode of My Two Cents Podcast. Um, this week we, um, I actually want to have a chat with you guys, uh, and especially with James Rose, uh, around transparency in the workplace. I hear it a lot. I hear a lot of leaders telling me, I'm really transparent, my team is transparent to my people. However, when you talk about the nitty gritty, they're actually not so transparent. So, uh, a few weeks ago I met James and we were talking about what was happening within this organization, Rentals United, and how transparency effectively helped him, his team, his management team, but also his people to take ownership on the deliverables and continue delivering during the COVID. And this is actually exciting because now we have a real life experience, a real life case, use case where we can talk about. But before we start, I'm going to give James a short moment to introduce himself uh, to the audience. James, welcome. Very nice. Thanks a lot for inviting me on your podcast. I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, so I'm James Burrows. I'm from London. Um, I'm founder and CEO of a company called Rentals United. We're a, a channel manager within the vacation rental industry. So predominantly a SaaS-based software business, and we target professional property managers and help them deliver their inventory and properties across a wide selection of booking channels like Airbnb and Booking.com and Expedia. Nice, nice. Well, one thing what resonated with to me in the in the last chat, and uh, I think a lot of you don't know, but maybe you do know, is that um, the travel industry has been hit drastically um, at the beginning of the COVID, really drastically. And then I meet someone like James, and he tells me, Raheem, that's not completely true. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that, James? <laughs> I think that's an understatement, actually. Um, yeah, I mean. I suppose April 2020, it just went from from night, sorry, from day to night. It was we we went to zero bookings to 95% cancellations, um, and it was yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, I think from th there's two sides to the coin here. We're dealing and helping with our customers maximize their booking opportunities across all these booking channels that we're connected to. And so, you know, the goal for us was making sure that they understand that, you know, they, they can survive, that this period is, is however long it's going to be, that think there is going to be a light eventually at the end of the tunnel. And how can we use the data that we've got to help them ident identify those opportunities that were still there even during the height of the pandemic. And then from an internal point of view, how, do we, how are we going to survive? Um, we're relatively fortunate that we pivoted from being a transactional business model to a SaaS-based business model. So you know that, that subscription side gave us a little bit of protection. Customers needed to give us a uh, their their monthly payments to ensure that they're being advertised. I mean, so we kind of use that opportunity to provide delays on invoicing, extended um, periods for free, you know, anything that we could do to help them, so long as we were making sure that we had some money coming in. So we kind of worked out a map financially of okay, how much can we afford? to not invoice over how long a period and then provide that discount to our customers that, that most needed it. Um, and, and I think that given that stance, there were many that were paying full whack and they kind of understood it and others um, that really needed it, we were, help, we were able to help them out, whatever it was, whatever we could really. So it was, um, it was a really good experience the industry that we're in is is relatively niche compared to the rest of the, rest of the travel sector, um, but it's fast growing and, and it's very kind of local. So there's a real big community feeling, togetherness, and I think that that helps um, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a learning. I think it's been a positive learning experience for my for my in my perspective anyway. It's nice. This is actually on the client side. So you you did your best to. To figure out how can I help my clients still be successful in these difficult times because you don't want to lose them at the end of the day when this crisis passes by and I'm hoping that it's actually passed by although lately in the news it shows something different 
But effectively what you've done, you've took all the, you did all the efforts to make sure that your clients are safe and that you give them a, a, enough information to actually continue. So that's, that helps you also with your retention of your accounts. Now, that same transparency you gave your clients, um, transparency in the workplace yourself with the team members is something different. What do you tell them? But don't you tell them? Now you keep them motivated. Uh, what's happening with you? Is it, is it an emotional thing? How did you guys go along with your teams? Because that's a bit of a different thing. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Um, I mean, you know, we're, we're a tech business, so everyone's very used to dealing with um, dealing in the cloud and working on different platforms that we're using. Um, we had already made the decision to be transparent and is actually part of our branding mantra within the within the company um, so we had already been practicing this before so you know in, in i kind of felt that i became ceo around three years ago i'm one of the founders but i became the ceo and, and i felt that there were too many silos within the organization that many people didn't really understand the work that they were delivering was part of something else. So they, there was less of a belonging to the overall purpose of, of the company. And we decided to run, you know, as, as most, most companies do, company meetings, but we're really, really um, transparent in terms of the, the information that we give them. We run, I mean, being a SaaS business, maybe it's a little bit more easier about the types of KPIs that we need to um, report to them. Um, and equally, it was a kind of a, a very much of a learning experience when you're going from one model to the next and, and SAS is all about the, the KPIs and the metrics. Um, but we're also, we're also telling them that, okay, so this is how much money we've got in the bank and this is the runway that we've got in terms of you know, when we're going to run out of money, this is how much we're burning at the moment. So, you know, everything from a really granular level um, and giving them this transparency also gave them a lot more ownership. And this really helped, especially when you're locked down in a small department in the middle of Barcelona and you're having to deal with, with you know, bombs going off around you with customers crying, you know, thinking that life is going to end tomorrow. And, you know, they needed to be there. And so I think, feeling part of it and being part of something that we're all in it together, I think it gave them added strength. Um, so, doing, we, um, we were very, uh, communication levels were, I think, heightened over this particular period. Um, I wrote a weekly update to everyone via Slack. Um, we had weekly meetings for the company via, via um, Hangout. Um, so, you know, I just felt that people needed to understand that they won on their own, that we were all, all going through the same, same situation, the same circumstances, and that we would provide as much support for them emotionally, financially, um, as, as much as we could. I think that's a really good thing to do. Um, but what are actually the effects? Because uh, it's great to be transparent. It's great to tell people that um, this is our burn rate, this is our et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I understand it from a general SaaS KPIs uh, that you talk about revenue and what's coming in and the number of cases and the challenges you have. But really talking about the financials of the organizations um, and given that transparency, I guess you have really good entrepreneurs within your organization because i can also imagine that a lot of people will be scared that they are they don't have any job security um did you feel that opening up did that result into challenges in respect to people getting afraid or getting concerned about what was happening or do you feel that it actually helped that people start looking at how can i do things better on a day-to-day -day basis i need to improve i need to uh, maybe cut some cost or improve in certain other areas to win something i think with any change in a business you weigh up the, the risks and for us yes of course there was a, a slight doubt that if we start opening up ourselves and they start realizing that 
we have X amount of money in the bank. We're, we're a, a company that's gone through investment. And so, you know, we're not going to last forever without actually getting income coming through. And so people are going to start worrying about their future. Um, but those, those negative aspects of, of this were, um, were put in the back seat and, and the benefits far outweighed the, the negatives. I think that giving them access to all of this information helped them really have a clearer idea about where the company was going and how they had input into the company. And, and you're right, it does create a slightly more entrepreneurial um, aspect to the business because they're they're starting to look at okay so i'm i'm doing this if i if i work on this particular client am i going to maximize my revenue opportunity here or if you know if i work on my particular time on this particular is that the best time allocation that i could i could do and so you're starting to get people to think a lot more commercially minded rather than just saying look i'm coming in at nine i'm finishing at six and i'm just going to do my job and i'm going to click my uh, wage check and i mean i i don't i've spoken to some companies and you're right i mean being transparent is, is you can there are many forms of it right and yeah. we're trying to be we're trying to go to the to the maximum with this um and it hasn't backfired on us yet uh you know i think that we're the more open that we are the more positive the mentality is within the organization and so we've we've noticed that there is now a little bit of an aftershock going on from from the pandemic i think during the pandemic everyone was kind of running around and trying to do the best they could really focused on what they were trying to deliver then afterwards it's like you know that it's a big sigh of relief right so okay i can now breathe i can go outside i can go and see my friends i can speak to my family and actually travel and and now suddenly it's the market is swamped swamped with opportunity there's huge amounts of of money in in the market and there are there are attractions everywhere and so far we have had we haven't had anyone really leave yet one or two but you know i think it's kind of to be expected but I think that um, the longevity of the people within our organization is, is testament to our, um, our goal of being more transparent, getting people more involved, helping them really understand the purpose within the organization, um, and really helping deliver a very clear vision of where the company is going and how they can contribute to it, to, has made a really big impact on how long people are staying within within the company. So I think this is one of the most uh, important things I think we can, can take it out of this chat is that um, transparency means building that trust, building that desire to stay within the organization, building that partnership between you and your team members. And you're right, at this moment in time, I think in the UK they call it the big resignation. I've been talking about it for the last few weeks because I heard it from one of my early podcasts. People are leaving their organization because they don't feel a belonging to their organization. It's not about the money. Ninety uh, percent, uh, and I think the statistics are right. Ninety-four percent of the people who leave their company leave their company not because of the company, but because of their leader. And that means for you, your executive team and your leadership team really had to step up. Uh, was it natural for them, or did you really have to have to coach them to be open? about these, these, these kind of things. Because I can imagine that you are, you have multiple leaders. You want to be transparent, but that does not mean that automatically it flows through the organization. Yeah, I, I think that with all of us, it's been a learning curve, my, my, myself included. Um, you know, I'm, I've been around, I've been working for, for 30 years. And if we had started talking about transparency 30 years ago, you know, people will tell you that you're completely crazy. And so you're from a, from, from a, a past that is very much based on don't let your competitors understand what you're doing, you know, and you should only give so much to your partners to help them build your business. It's all kind of very one-sided. And 
you need and, to know basis. Oh, no, completely. And, and you know that a partnership isn't just about signing a contract. It's about making sure that there's a totally win-win situation on, on both sides, right? So it was a big, I think it was a big learning curve for, for all of us, but it, it, was, it was something that we, we sat down as a company and we started talking about our brands. We knew that it was a little bit outdated. We knew that it needed changing. We were moving into a slightly different area within travel. And I think that that gave us the opportunity to think about what does what does Rentals United really want to be, and how do we want to be seen outside in the in the market? And and part of this was saying, look, you know, transparent. Let's let's be more open to our competitors, to our partners, to the market in general, and to our customers. And um, and because it was a decision that was based by everyone. It was well, you know, we have to get on with it now, and it had to come from, from, from right at the top. I started writing stuff within LinkedIn and and other thought pieces to everyone else about, look, here it is. We're an open book, and feel free to to dig into whatever you want. You know, I don't, and I think it's um, it's. I've, as I said before, I mean, I've not had any kind of negativity based on this, and I think that there's some people a little bit, a little bit slower than others in taking on this, this mantle. But I, I think it's been a, a really positive change. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, we're running a bit out of time, so uh, I'm going to come to my uh, my famous last question, um, no, almost <laughs> last question. <laughs> if you look at what you've done, uh, you mentioned in the beginning, um, I started writing blogs. I started. Uh, writing a blog online through on one hand Slack internally, on the other hand doing that through uh, LinkedIn and other uh, another media. You said I was opening up my books for anyone, uh, for our partners, for our clients, for our team members. But if you look at transparency, what would be for you the top three things you have to do to make sure that uh, your your team can really be transparent towards the organization? and towards the outside. What would be the top three things if you are a company who is used to um, uh, communicating based on the needs instead of the full communication towards building a transparent organization? What would be the, th the top three things you would advise them to do? Well, I suppose my first would be to get the buy-in of, of the organization first. If, if if people are not going to really understand it and it's not really going to come from them, then they're just not going to believe that it's a great idea. Um, second would be to throw away any arrogance and, and you know, we're all on the same level. We're all working. You know, I think that we, as I suppose my, my other partners, the, the founders within the organization, you know, we're still relatively idealistic about what we can give to the industry. And I think that that needs to be all part of, of the whole purpose. You know, we're trying to give something to the greater good rather than make money. You know, I'm a business owner. Of course, I want to do well um, and I want the company to, to be as successful as it can. But I think that there has to be a greater good attached to it as well um, so that arrogance kind of out the window and the third is that um, it needs to come from the CEO it can't come from anyone else and, and you find that the culture and I've been into many organizations where you, the, the, the personality of the, the CEO is generally stamped on the rest of the, the company um, and so you know, if I'm going to make this decision and we're going to make it together, then I hope that I need to, well, I need to, to take on this um, purpose myself and, and be as forthright about achieving these this goal as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, I, I, agree. I agree. It can only come from the top. and uh, It's all lead by example. It, it takes time to get those changes through. Yeah. Hey, James, thank you so much for, 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 for joining me in this podcast. Uh, I think for a lot of people who are listening now or are going to listen in the future, this is a really important topic because this is actually a game changer in how to motivate and stimulate your team. And like you said, maybe you're going to lose some team members, 
maybe they're not ready for that. But on the other hand, you want that entrepreneurship. You want your company to grow. You want your company to succeed. What better way as doing it all together, I would say. Yeah. On that bombshell, James, if people want to learn more about this or they want to get in touch with you or they want to know more about Rentals United, because I think you have been building an amazing company with amazing people. There's a lot of fun. Uh, you yeah. guys don't know, but we're having a lot of fun on the outside of this podcast too. <laughs> but if someone wants to talk to you and get in touch with you and share information or want to bring some, how do they get in touch with you? LinkedIn, email. Um, I'll be happy to kind of share if they want to contact you and I'll be happy to, to share my details. No problem. So yeah, feel free to contact me anytime. I'm always open to meeting new people and discussing anything. Perfect. Again, thank you so much for joining me in the podcast. I really enjoyed it. I hope yeah, you enjoyed it. I did, yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, people, uh, if you want to learn more, uh, I'll put some links in the in the comments below, in the in the notes, uh, so you can contact James directly, or you can come to us. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the DNA Masterminds, then feel free to contact me. I'm happy to have a chat. And, and maybe I can put you in a group uh, nearby future with James, so you guys can brainstorm a bit more and solve uh, business challenges. Thank you again for joining and for listening. Uh, next week we will be back. Um, and I'm going to wish you guys a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. Enjoy the weekend. And I look forward to seeing you soon again.